Creating an ML model in a notebook can be quick and straightforward, but when you need to expand your ML workflow to be sustainable and scalable, things can get more complex. In previous videos, we've talked about pipelines and how you can create, manage, and reproduce your workflows at a high level. Let's break it down by walking through a model that we'll later use in a Keyflow pipeline. Today, we'll go through the details of a sample ML model. You can check out other Keyflow samples in the link below. First, set up a notebook server running on Keyflow. If you need a refresher, check out our previous videos on how to do that. Next, clone the GitHub repo linked below and access the Chicago Crimes Research Notebook. This notebook walks through a model that we'll use as a part of a Kubeflow pipeline in the next video. So let's walk through how the model actually works. The model uses Chicago Daily Crimes data to forecast how many crimes are expected to be reported the next day based on how many were reported over the previous days. Once the dependencies are installed, the first step is to query the data table sitting in BigQuery for daily crimes over time, then download it into our Jupyter Notebook. Next, you can visualize the data as a line plot named Daily Crime Reports to give you an idea of the actual values over time. To prepare the data for a model, you need to pre-process the data. Since this is a sequence model, you need to split data sequentially to avoid potential bias. With time-based data, you want to make sure you're not feeding the model data that happened after the prediction window. Then define the percent of data you should use for your training, 80%, and the number of observations used to predict the next observation. Our window size is seven. In other words, you'll be using the prior seven days worth of data to predict the next day's crime count. When we pre-process the data, we'll split it up into the training and evaluation data sets and then normalize the data to avoid the influence of any outliers. In order to begin training our model, you need to reformat our training data set. This generates an input function that specifies features and labels, whether to shuffle the data, number of epochs, and batch size. The resulting data set can be fed directly to the model for training or evaluation. Then create a model for regression, which returns a compiled model, an object that we'll use to train. Now you can begin training and evaluation by passing in the training data set validation data set, and finally, train the model using those. It returns the trained model. Once you specify batch size, learning rate, and number of epochs, you can run the train and evaluate function to get the final model. To evaluate the model, take the trained model and feed it the other 20% of evaluation data. Finally, you can plot the model's prediction outcome and compare it to the actual counts. Looking pretty good. In the next video, we're going to take this model and create an ML application using Kubeflow pipelines. Stay tuned. <laughs>